Have you ever wondered why your videos don't look like some of your favorite films? Other than the expensive equipment, of course, uh, the camera, the lighting, the crew, there is missing sauce. Today I'm going to show you how you can make any footage look cinematic. In this tutorial, we're going to be using two methods. Number one, by using a Kodak 2383 LUT that comes with the DaVinci Resolve. And the other one is by using a film emulation plugin called Dehanza. Now, the answer is paid, yeah, but it delivers the most accurate film evaluation results that I've ever seen. So without any further ado, let's dive in. Here we are inside DaVinci Resolve color page. This footage was shot on Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K in B-RAW. That's why I'm getting these raw settings that you're looking at. Let's create a few nodes and we have to convert this footage from log to rec 709. In order to do that, we will drop a color space transform over here onto our node. Now here inside color space transform, it is important for you to know what camera settings were used while filming. I know the settings. This was shot on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K because I was the one who filmed it during my trip to Thailand. For our output, I'm going to select DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. Let me leave these settings as they are. Don't have to change these. Why did I do that? Because I am color grading inside DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate Color Space. For my output, I've set it to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. That is what my monitor is calibrated to. And for our 3D lookup table, we are going to change the settings from trilinear to tetrahedral because that gives us a better rendering of the 3D lookup table. Uh, make sure you check broadcast safe. And now for our output display transform, we're going to give the input value of DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. And for the output, it's going to be Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. And this, ladies and gentlemen, has converted our footage from log to rec 709. We haven't done any color grading yet. We have just converted our footage from log raw color space to a display color space that our devices and our monitors are capable of showing. This is the before and this is the after. Okay, so now let's begin the color grading process. On my first node, after my color space transform, I would like to compress the highlights a little bit. Let's rename these highlights and go to our qualifier. In our qualifier, select the luminance range and highlight our brightest spots in our video. Go back to our primaries and bring our highlights down. We have to push them further down a lot. And for our next node, we are going to adjust our exposure. For this, I'm going to grab my offset wheel. The offset wheel controls all these three lift, gamma, and gain all together. I'm going to bring it down a little bit. It looks too faded. And uh, just a bit more. Find that sweet spot. And I'm going to raise the highlights a little bit. This way you're also adding some contrast to the footage. After setting my exposure, I like to white balance my footage. For this, I like to use the printer lights, shortcuts on my keyboard. Uh, you can turn them on by going to your color menu and select printer lights. I am balancing the footage using my keyboard and that is controlling my offset over here. Uh, yeah, that looks about right. Looks good. Now in order to sell any look, we have to make sure that we have clean blacks. The darkest part in our image should be very clean. 
the best way I like to clean blacks is by going inside the log wheels and adjusting the shadows. I'm also looking at my graph, the RGB graph. It is showing me my red, green, and blue channels. Take a look. It has dramatically improved the depth in our scene and removed the green tint that was going on. I still think the sky is a little too bright. I would like to bring it down a little bit. For that, I'm going to create a power window and uh, select this gradient window over here and make a selection, qualify the sky, only the brightest spots. bring them down just a little bit so the foreground the building has a better uh, pop to it that looks about right this is the before and this is the after so far we have only balanced our footage and this process is known as color correction we haven't started any color grading yet this was color correction Color correction is the process of making your footage look as natural and realistic as possible as you saw it on set while shooting on the location. For our next step, I'm going to create another node and we're going to change the color of our sky. We're going to do this by using our hue curves and uh, yeah, make it a little more cyan. Yeah, that looks good. Now I'm going to create another node and drop another CST color space transform on this and for our input rec 709 input gamma gamma 2.4 for the output rec 709 and for this we are going to select Cineon film log. Because what we're going to do next requires a Cineon film log input and that is applying the codec 2383 LUT that comes with DaVinci Resolve. Select them both together and create a new compound node. Head down to our key and now we can control the intensity of our node from here. If you find it a little too harsh you can always dial it back a little. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay. I have to make a few adjustments after applying my uh, Codec 2383 LUT. The Codec 2383 made it a little contrasty. That's why we had to adjust our exposure a little bit. Let's create another node after our codec 2383 and this is for our effects. Effects can be applied such as glow, film grain after our color space transform. Now what I like to do here is change the composite type to soft light and control the intensity by controlling the shine threshold over here. By decreasing the value, we are adding more brightness in the scene and uh, make the spread a little better, decrease the saturation, recover our highlights a little bit, and control the overall global blend to control the intensity. I don't want it to look fake. Yeah, this looks about right. Keep it a little natural. We can add some atmosphere in our scene. This is available with the new DaVinci Resolve update, DaVinci Resolve 20.1.1. .1. That is a version that I'm using. I'm sure this is also available in DaVinci Resolve 20. Okay, that looks about right. Looks good. It just makes things more 
creamy and gives a better roll off in our highlights. Okay, so for our next node, I will like to add some film grain. Add some film grain. For our composite mode, soft light, our preset is going to be 35 mm, 35 mm 400T. I'm going to increase our grain size a little bit, add a lot of it in the highlights and some of it in the midtones. I'm not sure whether you can see this after YouTube compression, but it's very subtle. It's adding some texture to our scene. It's looking good. Let's rename this grain and globe. Before and after. I'm going to create another parallel node and I will add some contrast pop to it because we lost some of our beautiful texture that we have in our buildings. Just a little bit, not too much, to bring back our texture so you can feel it. Take a look. Just a little contrast pop to give more texture and weight to our image. Rename this pop, contrast pop. Okay. What else? What else can we do here? So this was our film emulation done using DaVinci Resolve's built-in Codec 2383 LUT. And now for our next film emulation, we are going to use Dehancer, the plugin that I was talking about earlier. For that, I'm going to create a new node prior to our output display transform, drag and drop Dehancer for our effects menu. As you can see, it looks bad right off the bat because we are working inside DaVinci Wide Gamut, but by default, Dehancer is set to Rec 709. So we're going to change it from Rec 709 to DaVinci Wide Gamut. As soon as we do that, you will notice that it has made it a little subtle. Okay, so let's dive in, go to our effects menu. Now by default, our film stock is set to Codec Vision 3 to 50D. We can enable and disable it from here. And for now, I will disable it. Head down over here to our film developer, increase the color boost a little bit. Let's go to our film compression, increase the white points. This has made our clouds a little better. I'm not going to change the black and white points, leave them as they are. And now for our film print, I am going to select codec 2383 and enable analog range limiter. This helps you normalize your images black and white points to a more natural analog film like range, resulting in a softer image with improved detail in deep shadows and bright highlights, preventing digital clipping and providing more headroom for further image adjustments. Let's make this image a little warmer by targeting our whites. Not too much, just a little bit. And decrease the overall exposure. Let's head over to our color head. Enable it. And I'm only going to adjust the shadows a little bit by adding cyan in the reds. Not too much. For our film grain, uh, I'm going to make it a little subtle because right now I feel like it's too much. Yeah, that's about right. I'm going to create another serial node prior to our input device transform. And let's select ultra noise reduction, analyze. And also, we are going to add some temporal noise reduction as well, just a little bit. 
As you can see, it has removed some of the digital noise that we were getting since we already have our grain, film grain from Dehancer. The texture is still there. Let's rename it Dehancer. And now let's head towards Halasian. It's like 35 mm, no rim jet. Take a look at the edges of our trees and our building. You will see we have some halation going on. I think the image is too warm. Let's head back to our film print and target our whites. Make it a bit more towards the cooler side. What else can we do here? We can add some vignette. That looks good. I think it's a little too intense. Yeah, let's fix that by increasing our exposure. Change the quality to high. That's a slower preview, but it will give you accurate results. And if you feel like it's too much, you can always dial it back a little. Let's enable our contrast pop and glow. before and after. So there you have it. That was our method number two, film emulation using Dehancer plugin. Let me know down in the comments which method do you prefer. The free one with the Codec 2383 lot that comes with DaVinci Resolve or the paid method that we used by using the plugin called Dehancer. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.